Hi, I'm tired. So this isn't gonna be very good. And I didn't bother to put makeup on because I'm tired. So, um, there has been much of a debate on what I'm going to read to you. Um, I was going to read Rachel Cohn's Vera Le Freak, which I'm reading now. Um, it's a good book, but you wouldn't like it, and it's not very ladylike for a lady to read, like myself. And, uh, uh, yeah, we're right in the middle of an awkward sex scene at the moment. And you wouldn't understand what I was talking about if I started reading this, so, you know. I was also going to read, da 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 da, J.D. Salinger's Nine Stories. I love J.D. Salinger, he's awesome. Um, but yeah, I, I, this is one of these, this is one of those books. Where I think you have to read the author's most famous work before reading their collection. So, and as far as I know, you have not read The Catcher in the Rye, which you need to do. Um, I'm just going to read The Geography Club by Brett Harnger. And it would be awkward if I spoke from the point of view of a gay teenager. Gay male teenager. So, just, you know, it's a good book, though. You should read it. Geography Club, Brett Harnger. Go for it. Also, The Bell Jar, Sylvia Plath, which is what I'm going with right now. You know, I, I, I haven't read this at, yet, actually, so we're going to go on this little adventure together. Um, I was going to read Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist, uh, but I have the movie cover, and the movie cover annoys me, and also, on the first page, there are, like, four F-bombs, so I know how you feel about it. Speaking of uh, nerd fighter things that you should do, catch on the rye. Because I have three copies of it. Yeah. This one is original. It's a video front cover. Yeah. These, I'm just, I I'm obsessed. I have a Salinger problem. Holden Caulfield is my hero. Anyway. Bell jar. Sylvie Plath. Let's go. Chapter 1. It was a queer, sultry summer. The summer they electrocuted the Rosenbergs. And I didn't know what I was doing in New York. I... I'm stupid about executions. The idea of being electrocuted makes me sick. And that's all there was to read about in the papers. Goggle-eyed headlines staring up at me at, on every street corner. And at the fusty, peanut-smelling mouth of every subway. It had nothing to do with me, but I couldn't help wondering what it would be like being burned alive all along your nerves. I thought it must be the worst thing in the world. New York was bad enough. By nine in the morning, the fake, country-wet freshness that somehow seeped into overnight, evaporated like the tail end of a sweet dream. Mirage gray at the bottom of their granite canyons, the hot streets wavered in the sun, the car tops sizzled and gl glittered, and the dry, cindery dust flew into my eyes and down my throat. I kept hearing about the Rosenbergs over the radio and at the office till I couldn't get them out of my mind. It was like the first time I saw a cadaver. For weeks after, the cadaver's head or what there was left of it, floated up behind my eggs and bacon at breakfast and behind the face of Buddy Willard, who was responsible for my seeing it in the first place. And pretty soon I felt as though I were carrying that cadaver's head around with me on a string, like some black, noseless balloon stinking of vinegar. I knew something was wrong with me that summer because all I could think about was the Rosenbergs and how stupid I'd been to buy all those uncomfortable, expensive clothes, hanging limp as fish in my closet, and how the all the little successes I'd totted up so happily at the college, fizzled, fizzled to nothing outside the slick marble and plate glass fronts along Madison Avenue. I was supposed to be having the time of my life. I was supposed to be the envy of thousands of other college girls just like me all over America, who wanted nothing more than to be tripping out, tripping about in those same size 7 patent leather shoes I'd bought in Bloomingdale's one lunch hour with a black patent leather belt and a black patent leather, leather notebook pocketbook to match. 
And when my picture came out in the magazine, the twelve of us were working on drinking martinis in a skimpy imitation silver lame bodice stuck onto a big fat cloud of white tulle on some starlight roof in the company of several anonymous young men with all American bone structures hired alone for the occasion. Everyone would think I must be having a real world. Look what happened in, look what can happen in this country, they'd say. A girl who lives in some out of the way town for nineteen years, so poor she can't afford a magazine, and then she gets a scholarship to college and wins a prize here and a prize there, and ends up steering New York like her own private car. Only I wasn't steering anything, not even myself. I just bombed from my hotel to work and to parties and from parties to my hotel and back to work like a numb trolley bus. I guess I should have been excited the way most of the other girls were, but I couldn't get myself to react. I felt very still and very empty, the way the eye of a tornado must feel, moving dully along in the middle of the surrounding hall blue. Okay, I think that's all I'm going to do. As my vlogs are really long, usually, but that's because I have a lot to say. Ugh. Good night. Diptba. French llama. All that quality stuff. Good night. I dropped you. I didn't drop you, I just flipped over because I'm not a sucker. Good night.